Hi, Jimmy Toka here with another product review for HobbyFanatic.com. Today we're looking at a really neat product. We're looking at the Hue LED light bulb by Philips. This is one of the first uh, light bulbs on the market that actually allows you to change the color of the bulbs. Now, this is available right now only through the Apple Store, and the starter kit is $199, and that includes three light bulbs and a base station. The base station is what actually is controlling the bulbs. It acts sort of as a bridge uh, between the bulb community network and your home network and the applications that run on either an iPhone or an Android device. Now, this is a really cool package these things come in. They've got to market a little bit. I just wanted to show this off how slick this thing is. This package must have cost 10 bucks by itself, but since it's a new product, people need a lot of information, so you can't really blame them for that. Um, we're going to break this review into two parts. One, the bulbs themselves, just as light bulbs. How do they stack up? And two, the applications and the software behind the light bulbs and what's that? It's all about how well is that really going to work in the real world. All right? So let's go take a look at these bulbs. Now, first off, to get this up and running, you're going to have to plug the base station into your home network. And this is the first requirement of this product. You need a Wi Fi base station with wired Ethernet ports available on it to get this up and running. I did try this product without this, without this hardwired LAN port, and it does not work. Plug the device in. Power it on, and you'll see it's going to connect to your home network, and then it's going to go out and try to connect to the Hue website. At this point, it's up and running. <clears throat> now, it's important that it's plugged directly into the router. I tried plugging it into um, like an extra port on the back of my uh, VoIP modem. did not work. <clears throat> so, first requirement right there. Okay, once you've got the base station installed, all you got to do is screw in the light bulbs and install the Hue application, either on an Android device or on an Apple product, like, a, like an iPod Touch or an iPad. <clears throat> and when you first launch the application, you need to have Wi-Fi enabled. Actually, you need to have Wi-Fi enabled anytime you control the bulbs. Um, but it's going to search for that base station, and there's a button you push on the base station to pair the base station to your device. Now, I was able to pair the two, the two devices, an Apple and an Android product, and I can control these light bulbs from either one. <clears throat> but we'll get into the software more in a moment. I want to talk about the bulbs themselves. When you first, uh, what you're looking at here is the default brightness for the bulbs. If there's no device around and you just plug these bulbs in and turn them on, this is the brightness that they're going to come on to. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a warm light, light bulb, warm white light. Um, Philip says these bulbs are 600 lumen bulbs and consume 8.5 watts power. Now, I'm assuming that's a maximum because here I have three bulbs. My watt meter is showing 14 watts. It's extremely efficient. And it's a nice warm color. Um, I'm going to turn off these two and we're going to compare it to some other bulbs. Uh, this is the Philips Ambient LED 50-watt uh, equivalent. This is also an 8-watt bulb. Um, you may have seen this in one of my other reviews. It kind of gives you an idea. They're pretty comparable. The, uh, the uh, older Ambient bulb is a little dimmer. Not quite as bright. Okay, good. Um, just for more, for more comparison, this is the Philips 10-watt. Uh, they call it a 60-watt incandescent equivalent. It produces 800 lumens. Um, this one you can get at Home Depot. So, another comparison. And finally, compare this to the new Philips L Prize winner. They call this also a 60 watt bulb, 60 watt incandescent equivalent. This bulb produces 970 lumens uh, at 10 watts rated. So, uh, just some you know, other bulbs here to compare against. But of course, you don't buy these bulbs because they're white light bulbs. You buy them for their color. Changing ability. So let's plug these back in here. Let's take a look. Alright. Now the application comes preloaded with a bunch of scenes and we're going to go into that in a lot more detail. But let me just show you some of them real quick. Uh, this one is called Deep Sea. It's primarily a red and a blue. Here's one called Pencils. I like pencils because it kind of shows you the sort of primary colors that these bulbs can create. Uh, it's got kind of a yellow and an orange and a sort of a purpley color. 
Now, I want to say about the color on these bulbs, I was very surprised at how bright these are, even at very saturated colors. Um, I mean, obviously, with at full brightness, it's using all the LEDs in the bulb, probably. Um, at some of these colors, it's changing up that mix of the LEDs in the bulbs. I expected the brightness to go way down, but they can produce some very bright light with color. So, i got to say, I was very impressed with that. Um, let me see here. And it also comes with... Also comes with uh, sort of just some other preset scenes like relax. This is just a nice warm yellow, energize, sort of a brighter blue. And in each one of these settings, you can dim. Each one of these scenes, you can dim the bulbs. They're very good, very good bulbs. They're not dimmer compatible. They're not compatible with dimmer fixtures or switches, but you can dim the bulbs as well as changing the color. Now, one more point about the bulbs and dimming. Here I've got these dimmed down, like here's halfway, okay? These bulbs are now consuming six watts of power. So if you have uh, you know, a bunch of these bulbs in a fixture and you don't need full brightness, there's maybe some additional energy efficiency you can gain out of these bulbs. All right, now I wanna talk in more depth about the software because it's a little bit of a different matter. Now I've gotta say, this is the state of the software when this product is released. So it's 1.0 software, we're talking November of 2012. Um, so that software is going to change over time, it's going to get better, uh, different people are going to write new applications. So this really is mostly intended to demonstrate the capabilities of the bulbs. I don't think this strikes me as being sort of not really your the end home automation software that you're going to be using to control these bulbs. This is the first generation software that's basically to show off the bulbs. What they've done is they've arranged uh, the software into groups of scenes um, and they also have some things called light recipes like these reading light recipes or energize and all these do is they're just various ways to set the colors of the bulbs or groups of bulbs okay so let's take a look here let's edit sunset and what you do is it brings up a picture and you just simply drag and drop the bulbs or groups of bulbs onto the photographs to set the colors okay now here on the uh, Apple app, you also have the ability to turn on alarms, um, which will make the bulbs come on at a specific time. So I want the bulbs to wake me up in the morning. I want them to fade in over three minutes. This is the classic, you know, using your lights as an alarm clock to get that nice soothing wake up kind of application. All right. So some other ways you can set the colors. You come into this screen and then flip the phone to the side. It brings up a little palette. You can again drag and drop the bulbs onto the palette. Okay, it's just a little bit of a simpler interface. All right, let's see. Um, some of the things you can do is you can add your own scene. If you have photographs, this is my daughter's uh, iPod Touch here, so we get pictures of fuzzy animals. I want to use that. There we go. Same deal. Okay? That's most of it. Now, some other things that you can do here, you can just use the camera also to directly take a photograph and get your thing. Now, I've got to say, uh, oh, and you can also link to the Hue, meethue.com website with this application to set the colors through the website. The web interface is very similar. Uh, the functionality is very similar to all this, and plus you can do some of it once you log into that website remotely. Um, not using the device. All right. Okay, so there's our look at Hue. Now I want to talk a little bit about how you might be using these things in the real world. The technology is super cool. Um, but the first thing you do when you bring it home, you're thinking, okay, where am I going to put these? How am I going to actually use them? First off, let me break the users into two kind of general groups. For people like retail space or restaurants um, or people with, say, a studio apartment, this product is ready to go right out of the box uh, because you're basically going to come in, you're going to set the light level to one setting, and you're going to leave it there all the time. But the problem comes in for people with houses. Um, remember in the, when I was showing you the lights the first time, when you flip this light switch off and you flip a light switch on, they go back to uh, the default bright white. This seems very, when I first heard this, I'm like, okay, that's pretty smart. It's, it's, they're working like a regular light bulb. 
The problem is, is it takes away everything that's special about the bulb if you use the light switch. At that point, it's just functioning like a regular light bulb. So if you're listening, Philips, the one thing in my opinion that you have to do is you've got to make them go back to the last color they were set to when the bulbs get turned, when the light switch gets turned on and off. Um, because most people, I don't believe, are going to walk around their house turning on their light switches with their smartphone or their iPad. I mean, it'd be great to be able to come in, set the colors, design the colors for every room, maybe have a designer come in, do all that for you, get everything just right. But then, when you use the light switches, they've got to go back to those set colors. Okay? Now, this is not a huge problem, um, because the technology these things are using is really cool. It's called uh, the ZigBee. It's a wireless protocol for low power devices. And there's a lot of different provisions within that protocol for different kinds of devices. Home automation, lighting being just one, uh, power usage, power monitoring, and other things like remotes and occupancy detectors. So um, I really see this sort of as being the base technology for a really kind of the, finally the home of the future where you can walk into a room, the lights will come on to whatever color you desire, you walk out of the room and the lights go off. Okay, so keep in mind there's going to be things coming out. There are already remotes that work with these. I haven't checked any out yet. Keep an eye out for a future review there. Um, a lot of software automations can, can be coming, you know, it's going to be coming in to control these in different new and cool ways. So this is base technology. The base technology is fantastic. The, the core of being able to set colors in your home, whatever lighting you want in different rooms, is here. It's really slick. So, check it out. All right? Thanks, Hobby Fanatic fans.